hi everyone this presentation is about the mechanism of vision uh, with the help of compound eyes in pineus indicus uh, it is referred as the mosaic vision okay now what happens is in the case of compound eyes as already mentioned it is made up of numerous smaller visual units each of the visual units is known as a an omatidium right now Uh, what happens is, uh, in with the help of an uh, compound eye, an organism may not be able to get a clearer picture, or uh, it is because of the deficient in focusing ability and development of a clearer image. Okay, so hence only a peripheral vision is possible, right? So compound eye it helps only in a very peripheral vision. Vision it is photosensitive; it forms a very uh, vague image. along with that it can help in identifying or recognizing the movement of the object that is seen okay it may not be able to get a clearer picture or deep uh, the image may not uh, help in identif identifying the depth of the particular uh, object but when it moves it will be able to understand okay now each omatidium it is capable of producing a separate image of the small part of the object seen so if there is a larger uh, if it is a larger object uh, if the organism is seeing a larger object each omatidium will pick up the image of a smaller part of that particular object okay and hence what happens uh, hence the image of the object uh, seen it may consist of smaller smaller pieces so the total image it may not be complete if the total image may be formed of uh, smaller smaller images of various parts of the object seen okay so this kind of a vision is what is known as a mosaic vision because it see, it resembles that of the mosaic artwork okay now depending upon the different intensities of light the uh, compound eyes may work differently once uh, is the apposition compound eye or the apposition image okay so here what happens is uh it this particular uh, a position image it is formed mainly when uh, the compound eye is exposed to bright light for example during daytime so during daytime when uh, bright light enters the omatidium what happens is the pigment cells these darker bands it represents the pigment cells the pigment cells stretch out or spread and what happens it will completely isolate the adjacent omatidium okay uh, it will isolate uh, the adjacent omatidia in such a way that the light which enters one omatidia it cannot pass into the next one because uh, it will get obstructed by the pigment cells so in this condition when a ray of light for example this is the object the particular animal is seeing okay so the light reflected by the part of the object x okay this is the part x okay so the light reflected it will enter directly into this omatid in the first omatid okay the light reflected from the per, this particular part it will fall perpendicular to the cornea it will enter the omatid and it will be focused on to the rhabdom this is the rhabdom okay now the same omatid will also receive light in an oblique way okay you can see here the light from the y part of the object it enters the first omatid obliquely okay and it gets reflected by this or it may get absorbed by the pigment cells so what happens to this light ray it is not going to contribute for the image formation okay so in this kind of a, a system what happens is only those light rays which perpendicularly fall on the cornea and enter the omatidium gets focused on the on to the uh, rhabdom will contribute to the image formation in such a condition what happens is uh, the complete image here you can see this rhabdom will produce an image of this particular spot okay and this rhabdom will create an image of this particular spot and the third rhabdom will produce an image of this particular spot it is completely independent okay but when you put all these images together you can have a complete image of this particular object so that is how a mosaic formation is formed okay and why it is known as an apposition image because here the complete image is formed by uh, several smaller smaller images kept close together apposition okay or juxtaposition right so that is why it is known as an apposition compound eye as already mentioned here the uh, 
sharpness of the object or the clear clarity of the object, uh, the image, I'm sorry, the clarity of the image, it depends upon how many uh, materia it is in, are involved for making, uh, for uh, image formation. Okay, and how much each of the materia is isolated from the adjacent materia. Now, coming to the next one, superposition. Superposition image uh, is formed during dim light vision. Okay, when during night time, when there is dim light, what happens is the pigment cells, it contracts. Okay, it migrates or contracts in such a way that the neighboring uh, materia, they are no longer completely isolated. Okay, so here you can see, uh, if you consider this particular materia, the light ray which falls on uh, falls perpendicularly onto this cornea gets focused onto the materia and this contributes to the image formation. Similarly, the light ray which falls obliquely onto this uh, into this materia, it gets reflected and it will get reflected onto the other uh, materia. Okay, right uh, now. If you speak about this particular rhabdom, this rhabdom receives light from another source. What is this? You can see here, okay, it gets reflected, reflected, right? So, this kind of uh, image formation uh, uh, actually helps in creating an image where the images are overlapped, okay? So, you can see here, uh, uh, there is a... Uh, overlapping of the images. So, in this condition, even the oblique rays of light uh, contribute to the formation of image after passing through a number of materia in this uh, in this particular way. Okay, and as a result, um, a complete image is formed by the overlapping of the images, and hence it is known as a superposition images. Okay, and uh, this is never sharp; it is very vague, and uh, uh, even though it is vague, it helps in actually understanding the movement of the object seen. Okay, in the case of Pineus, you can see that the, their eyes are adjusted to have both kinds of images, a position as well as superposition. But when you speak about other insects, we can see that uh, those which are nocturnal in nature, they have, they don't have the uh, uh, position image formation ability. They, their eyes are completely suitable for superposition uh, image formation. For example, like moths and all, which are nocturnal in nature, their eyes are permanently set for superposition image formation. But in the case of uh, butterflies which are active during daytime, their eyes are suitable for a position image formation. Okay, but in the case of pineus which we are speaking about, it do have the ability, their eyes are able to adjust to the light intensity and hence they can uh, form both a position image and superposition image depending upon the intensity of light that falls onto the um, in, in, onto the uh, or material. Okay, so this is about the mechanism of vision in the case of pinnace. Thank you.